Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So this is just going to be my quick first impressions of Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Now I got the expansion at about 10am um, this morning and it's now 1am the following evening. I've been playing it all the day but I've definitely been playing it for quite a lot of the day. And I've got to say that first of all, my impression is quite good. The expansion is a lot of fun. It, it gets the fun right, it gets the gameplay right. But, um, yeah, overall, let's, let's just start with where most people will be starting off with the expansion, and that is the story and just the initial 60 to 70 experience. So, the actual story itself is really just the usual affair with Diablo. It's not too great. Malfiel is a stylistically cool main villain, but honestly, he's not really much of a character, um, unfortunately. What I will say, though, is that the initial part of the game, maybe the first third is set in this city called Westmarch, and it just feels like so dark and gothic and just depraved and ran down, and the just the amount of people being slaughtered and the disregard for human life is just fantastic. It is so Diablo, and I really love Westmarch. It's actually my favorite location in all of Diablo 3. That includes the base game and the expansion, so overall, Westmarch is a massive hit. Another thing I liked is Basically how the overworld of Westmarch, and I suppose the other places as well, seems to be quite randomly generated. And you can find just various routes around the place, and then also there are a lot more, like, just little houses that you can go into and do a few, like, mini quest event thingies in. I think that overall just works out very well. It feels kind of varied, and for the first section of this expansion, I definitely felt more like I was exploring. Now that feeling did kind of dissipate as we went on. I think that the Blood Marsh uh, Swamp, and then the Battlefield of whatever the hell it's called, and then finally Pandemonium Fortress, I just don't think they were anywhere near as good as Westmarch. And overall, Westmarch, I think, should have taken up quite a bit more time. I think I was done with it in about 40 minutes to an hour, and that really is a pity because it was solidly just by far the best element of Reaper of Souls is Westmarch, um, just in terms of actual locations. The other places are pretty much par of the course, in my opinion. I think Pandemonium Fortress is kind of cool, but it's a bit annoying to play in, because it's just nothing but, like, well, it's mainly full of a lot of constrained corridors and that kind of thing, and when you have a lot of enemies that are wallers, it's just annoying. It's not really good gameplay, you can just be arbitrarily killed, so that's a little bit of a pity with, and with Pandemonium Fortress. I'm not going to talk anything, like, or go into any details about story itself and what happens, because obviously spoilers. Um, so, yeah, overall, I mean, the story mode is solid enough. In terms of duration, it was about three and a half hours, so... If you think about it, three and a half hours for, um, for 40 pounds, or 30 pounds, I think, for the expansion, it doesn't sound too great. In fact, it sounds pretty damn bad. Well, there are other things there. Um, obviously, if it was only three and a half hours, then I wouldn't be playing it to 1 a.m., First of all, we have Adventure Mode. This is a thing that I, I think you unlock it once you get your first character to level 70. Or maybe you can just do it from the outset. I'm not particularly sure. Hmm. I never really checked that. But anyway, the important thing about it is basically it opens up a world map of Sanctuary. You can choose between the five different acts in the game. And it will give you five objectives, five bounties to do. And once you finish these bounties, well, first of all, you get a, a wad of XP for doing each one of them. And they can involve things like go to a certain place and clear it out, or go kill a certain mob, go do a certain event, that kind of thing. Um, so once you do the five of those, then Tyrael rewards you with this little chest. That's pretty cool. And you get these items called, I think, Burning Embers or something? Uh, something along, that li um, along those lines anyway. And you can use them to purchase armor from an NPC. So that's kind of cool. And overall, the adventure mode is pretty fun. It definitely feels a lot more like adventuring. You're doing something different all the time. And it's not just following the same story, like, you know, linear path all the time, like with um, what we had to do with Diablo 3. So overall, I think adventure modes work quite well. Now, while you're doing adventure modes, you can get these things called, I think, Nephilim Rift Fragments or something like that. But basically, once you get five of them, you'll be able to open a Nephilim Rift. Now, what is a Nephilim Rift? Well, it's basically a completely randomly generated level, so it's going to have, like, a different tile set every time, kind of, and uh, you can fight a whole bunch of different enemies there, with, and then it culminates with a boss. So when you win those, you get a whole bunch of loot, you get, like, blood spirits or something, you get, a, like, a rare crafting mat, and just various other items like that. The Nephilim Rifts are definitely fun, and it will take you about one, if you do one set of five bounties in adventure mode, that will get you into one 
uh, Nephilim Rift. And that's essentially it in terms of the main changes. A lot of the other stuff comes with Loot 2.0, which I talked about earlier. So, yeah, I mean, overall, the endgame is definitely a lot more fleshed out than it used to be. Back in the day, the endgame essentially revolved around doing set parts of the story again and again and again, and because they were the same every time, people would just find the most efficient route, um, or route even, so you would just, I don't know, go to, say, Act 3 and just run from Section, um, I don't know, A to B constantly, and that is what the endgame of Diablo 3 was. Well, with Reaper of Souls, it's more, I guess, more dynamic, it's more randomized, Things are a lot more just varied from your moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and that really does work out pretty well, in my opinion. So that's that's really it for the main core game. Um, I guess other things to, uh, to talk about are the crafting. So we have a new crafting person in called the Mystic. She can transmog your items to other items, which makes sense. It's really what you'd expect from World of Warcraft, just that as you level her up, you just get um, transmog sets unlocked that you can change any bit of gear to. So that's pretty cool. Um, then she can also re-roll the stats on an item, which is nice, but of course, you know, you can, you can re-roll better or worse. And that's, that's essentially it for the Mystic. There is definitely more sort of stuff going on with crafting than there was in the base game, though. You can build, um, like, legendary items and various things like that, which is pretty cool. And really, that's it for crafting. I have found myself using the crafting system a lot more in Reaper of Souls than the Diablo 3. I'm not too sure if that's because I just wasn't using it for some reason in Diablo 3, but hey, I, I had a good bit of fun with it. Then I think the final thing to talk about is music and sound, that sort of thing. The sound assets are, of course, very good. They're very meaty, it feels great. But I think the music of this expansion, in particular, is excellent. I really did enjoy that. So overall, very good. Now next, let's just round it off with talking about the Crusader. So the Crusader is the new class and he is very fun, in my opinion. I've only got to level, I think, 16 or 17 with the Crusaders, so this is really just initial thoughts, but so far, it's an absolute ton of fun to play. It's definitely kind of tanky, but it's very satisfying. You can kind of clump enemies together and just do one big sweep and cleave a whole bunch of them. It, it just feels really satisfying. So I'll definitely have to wait and see until I'm level 70 in that character, just to get the final lowdown of it. Um, but yeah, that's really it for the Crusader. Honestly, it's a pretty cool class, and it's definitely a lot of fun, at least for my initial impression. It's probably also worth saying that the other classes are getting um, one extra ability each, and then a few passives. I haven't played with any other classes apart from... Oh, not Death Knight. Uh, Demon Hunter, yeah. And the Demon Hunter one is extremely fun. You'll see me use it one or two times in the video. It's the one with the big red flashing lines, kind of. I think it's really badass. It's a lot of fun to use. So, yeah, overall, I think they've done a pretty good job at revamping everything and making it more interesting. Now, the big question is, is this worth it? Well, what I'm going to say is that if you, for some reason, only play Diablo for the story, then no, don't buy the expansion until it's vastly, vastly, vastly reduced. Because it's only going to be three and a half hours of content, and the story doesn't really take the four. At all. So, if you're into the story of Diablo somehow, then this isn't really... For you, I guess. Um, well, I I think the story of Diablo isn't that great, but I think the lore is pretty interesting, so it's, it's a bit of a toss-up. Still, though, if you're the kind of person who enjoyed Diablo 2, and you want more of that experience, you just want to go and have like, the loot farming and maybe the adventure modes and that kind of thing seems interesting to you, then I think absolutely it is worth it. If you're into Diablo and you're into the genre, then this is an expansion that just polishes the whole game up and makes it a far better action RPG. The quality of the game is just so much higher. It, it really is, in my opinion, a lot, just vastly, vastly, vastly better than the core Diablo 3. Absolutely worth it. So, if you're into Diablo, um, if you're into action RPGs, buy it. If you're not into Diablo, then maybe if you can just pick up Diablo 3 for cheap, well, then you can have a bit of a try to see what it's like. Or maybe just play this Diablo Starter Edition or something like that. Um, but if you're, if you're the kind of person who only just plays through Act 5, or, you know, plays through the story once and is done, then I think the full price just doesn't really justify it. So it's really an expansion that's made for the people who enjoy Diablo and enjoy action RPGs. And I think that's potentially the right move, because I'm having a ton of fun with it. I'm not too sure about the longevity of the staying power, and I, I just can't comment on, it, comment on it yet, so... We'll see how that all goes. Maybe I'll talk about this game a bit more in the future. I might do one or two class guides of that kind of thing if anything particularly tickles my fancy. But overall, I think it's a really solid expansion, and coming from the perspective of someone who enjoyed the gameplay of Diablo 3 but not really some of the other systems, I'm having a great time and I do not regret my purchase one bit. 
So that's really it from this video. Um, I hope you found something useful in there and maybe just kind of acquainted you with the game a little bit more. So yeah, do let me know if you're going to pick it up and if you have, what do you think about it? Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.